First, want to get a, give you a live look at what is happening right now in Tampa. Authorities predict that Hurricane Milton will be one of the most destructive storms on record, and it's closing in on the Florida coast as we speak. All right, here's a live look at people driving north on I-75 right now. You can see hardly anyone left on the road. This is the last full day of evacuations. It's actually a pretty good sign to see not much traffic there right now, especially considering what we saw on the roads earlier today. This is the largest evacuation in Florida in seven years, and residents have been caught in a major backup with cars bumper to bumper at times. Everyone trying to get as far away from the coastline as possible. Anyone who chose to stay will need to have all of their essentials in place. A lot of the hotels in Florida are fully booked. We've seen empty store shelves and long lines at gas stations, and there have been multiple reports that some stations have even run out of fuel. Meteorologist Kyle Roberts is here for Pete today. Uh, Kyle, what, what is Milton doing right now in, in terms of its intensity? Well, it re-intensified uh, from what it was doing earlier this morning. It had uh, briefly dropped down to a Category 4 storm. Now it is back up to a Category 5. And you can see it in the uh, satellite data here because the eye had kind of been obscured by the clouds. And then look at that. I mean, just a perfect circle of an eye here within the last uh, several hours. Very uh, indicative of an intensifying hurricane and once again back to category five wind speeds of 165 miles an hour gusting to 200 about 500 plus miles to the southwest of Tampa at the moment and basically going to move almost due northeast up toward the Tampa area over the next 24 hours. Landfall is going to be late tomorrow night, early Thursday morning, depending on how you want to look at it. Now the wind speeds will come down as the storm approaches uh, the shoreline there, but that really is not going to change the forecast at all. Still, I mean, category three storm weakening only to a category, a decent category one as it exits the other side of Florida. I mean, that's enough wind speed to cause widespread power outages, lots of damage inland of Florida. And of course, it's going to be a very big storm as it makes landfall as well. And that's going to make the storm surge problem be highly, highly destructive, especially anywhere from Fort Myers to Sarasota to Tampa to north of Tampa, five to 10 to 10 to 15 feet of storm surge. Remember, that's above ground. So anything, you know, ground level and then imagine 10 to 15 feet of water on top of you. That's what coastal Florida, right where that storm is going to make landfall, uh, will be dealing with. And even on the backside of this storm, the eastern coast of Florida could be dealing with about three to five feet of storm surge. We'll talk more about Milton coming up. Our own 14 day forecast has a pretty decent cool down. We'll talk about when when I return. All right, thank you, Kyle. Uh, Dia Wall has been taking a deeper look at some of the preparations underway right now. Wow, some pretty dire warnings here, Dia. Man, dire would be an understatement, Chris. Officials say Hurricane Milton could be the worst storm to hit the state in a century. The National Hurricane Center warns that Milton's intensity is starting to rebound, even though it's a Category 4 storm right now. You just saw Kyle's forecast there. President Biden is postponing a trip overseas to monitor the storm with a team at the White House. I directed this team to do everything it can to save lives and our communities help our community before, during, and after these extreme weather events. NASA astronaut and U.S. Navy Commander Matthew Dominic posted this time lapse flying over Hurricane Milton from space. You can see the trademark shape there. In Florida, people are bracing for the outer bands of the storm to arrive in the morning before it's expected to make landfall tomorrow night into Thursday morning. In the dark, predicted to bring a record-breaking storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. This is literally catastrophic, and I can say without any dramatization whatsoever, if you choose to stay in one of those evacuation areas, you're going to die. Officials are urging people to evacuate. We've seen heavy traffic on Florida highways heading north, but some gas stations are running low on fuel, and it's only been two weeks since Hurricane Helene wreaked havoc in Florida. This is forcing families to make tough decisions. Some people were able to get flights out as late as today, but thousands of flights are delayed or canceled through Thursday. The Florida Aquarium in Tampa is even moving its animals to the highest level of the facility. During Hurricane Helene, it took on three feet of water, a first in the aquarium's 30-year history. Staff here is evacuating midday Wednesday and plans to return on Thursday. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor is also warning people about mis- and disinformation being spread that the city or FEMA don't have enough resources to respond to the storm. She went on to say she is in communication with President Biden and the FEMA administrator ahead of what's expected to be the worst storm her city has seen in 100 years. Chris. 
Yeah, dear. Uh, you know, we sure hope that people are, are, you know, heeding that warning if they haven't already. Thank you so much. I uh, want to tell you, WFA rallied around the victims of Hurricane Helene, and we're doing it again for Milton, partnering with the Red Cross to help families in need. You've seen how devastating these storms can be. So we're collecting donations for those who need it most. Just scan the QR code on your screen. We have all the information at WFAA.com. We appreciate anything that you're able to give, and the families certainly will, too.